Culture is an umbrella term which encompasses the social behavior and norms found in human societies. So over time, behaviors, patterns, and habits get adopted into what we call a culture. And it's easy to forget that at a certain point in time, what may be a cultural norm today was developed. It was not a fixed part of the culture that's always been that way. And this is good news because it reminds us we create our lives and our culture. And we are constantly creating our lives and our culture. And if we feel what we have created either personally or collectively is no longer working for us or in the best interest of our culture or ourselves, we can then make changes. It is from this perspective I share this information with you. Hi, Patrick Cameron, extraordinary integral coach. And I want to speak about a dynamic pattern that is pervasive in our current culture. It is played out every day in a variety of environments, situations, and relationships. It is at play in our families, our schools, our businesses, and in our government. Today, it is found everywhere. Everywhere humans relate to each other, we find it. I want to address this phenomenon and support all of us in having a deeper insight to be able to stand together in a perspective of curiosity. And the more information and resources we can acquire as it relates to the world we are living in at the moment, the better chance we have of being part of the solution and stop contributing to the problem. I want to introduce you to the drama triangle. Not to increase the level of drama in your life, but to shed some important light upon it and how we identify it when it arises. The drama triangle has become pervasive in our culture. We even see it in how we parent. The drama triangle first came on the scene in 1960 when a psychotherapist by the name of Stephen Karpman identified it. The drama triangle is also known as the Karpman triangle, honoring Dr. Karpman. The triangle is a simple representation of the roles we take on when we engage with each other, when we role play with each other. If you feel, for example, like your team members in your business are not able to communicate effectively with each other, resulting in no growth or momentum, or you find that your family dynamics are stuck in patterns of relating with each other that never change. It may be because the drama triangle is the game you are all enrolled in playing. So let me explain. As we know, all triangles have three points and three sides. The drama triangle, without exception, has three roles. The three roles are called victim, rescuer, and perpetrator. I'm not simply speaking about a theory or abstract concept. I'm speaking from personal experience. I have played each of these roles many times. So when do we see the drama triangle and where is the drama triangle found? Well, the triangle shows up and comes into play whenever conflict arises. And now conflict is actually a good thing. By this I mean it's a natural response to change. Conflict is a signal that a growth opportunity is present. So keep that in mind. But this is where the drama triangle will and does stop the process of growth and development because as you will see, the triangle stagnates and restricts creativity and collapses possibilities. Unfortunately, the drama triangle is a response to conflict that is ineffective. It is ineffective because the only movement it allows is from point to point to point of the triangle and all of its energy is trapped within the triangle. The drama triangle prolongs disharmony and avoids healthy outcomes. The drama triangle self-perpetuates itself rather than coming to any resolution because playing in the roles becomes more important for each participant than resolving the initial conflict itself. Entrenched drama triangles may seem to be impenetrable. These repetitive patterns of interacting lead to zero growth and development both in business systems and in personal relationships. So let's look at the three archetypes, the three roles, and let's start with the victim role. Now victims in this drama triangle are helpless and hopeless. They deny responsibility for their negative circumstances and deny possession of the power to change their circumstances. Victims do less than 50%. They will not take a stand. They act super sensitive and they want kid glove treatment and pretend to be impotent and incompetent. Do you know anyone that fits this role? We are seeing the symptoms and results of the rise of victimhood culture. 
to the point that victim is now seen as a moral virtue. And this is true. This is not an exaggeration. This is not to discount or marginalize the members of our culture that require help. Let's not confuse those people with what I'm terming here as victims. These people, we know there are people in our culture that have special needs, and I firmly know and support helping those that are less fortunate, that have legitimate needs and require support. The victims I am describing here are capable of doing life successfully, but rather than take responsibility for their life situation, they abdicate that responsibility, and that's a huge difference, so keep that in mind. The next role in the triangle we will dive into is the role of rescuer. Now, rescuers are constantly applying short-term repairs to a victim's problems. Rescuers will rescue others while neglecting their own needs. They are always working hard to help other people. Now, they are typically harried, tired, and often have physical complaints. And they are usually angry, but they're angry underneath, and maybe a loud or many times a quiet martyr in style. So they will announce it, or they will silently hold it within, feeling martyring themselves is the right and perfect role in this. So that's part of their style. They use guilt to get their way, and this is where it really gets fun. The rescuer is also involved in an unseen, unaware activity of being a perpetrator. That's right, it's very easy to slide over to that. The rescuer becomes a perpetrator every time they rescue. And how does a rescuer become a perpetrator? Well, a rescuer keeps a victim in victimhood because in their rescuing activities, they do not allow the victim to take responsibility. They can't, otherwise they don't have a victim to rescue. So this rescuing behavior thus robs the victim of the opportunity to step out of the role of being a victim and robs them of the dignity and respect of learning how to stand up for themselves. Got any rescuers in your life? Again, not to confuse helping and serving with rescuing. The world is full of helpers and people who selflessly serve others. Rescuer's energy and motivation is distinctly different from the beautiful helpers and people who selflessly serve in the world. The rescuer's motivation are self-centered. A really good distinction I've come across is that helpers empower and rescuing saves. So rescuing doesn't allow for growth or teaching and modeling healthy boundaries or allowing consequences for another's actions. For example, when a parent does the child's homework so the child doesn't get in trouble, that's not helping, that's rescuing, and not allowing the child to experience the consequences. So you see the, you see the distinction there. Helpers will teach you how to ride the bike, and the rescuers will just get on the bike and ride off themselves. Now the last role in the drama triangle to understand is the perpetrator role. And as I mentioned, rescuers can slide right into perpetrator, and many times they do. And so perpetrators are the blamers. They blame the victim and criticize the enabling behavior of rescuers. They blame and criticize, but they also do so without providing any guidance, assistance, or a solution to the underlying problem. So it's the energy of blame. They would rather fix the blame than help fix and understand the problem. Perpetrators are critical and unpleasant and good at finding fault. They often feel inadequate underneath and perpetrators control with threats, orders, and rigidity. They can be loud or quiet in style, and sometimes they're seen as being a bully. And here's where we get to play. Players sometimes alternate or switch roles during the course of a drama triangle game. For example, a rescuer pushed too far by a perpetrator will switch to the role of victim. Now, as we all know, victims depend on the savior, right? And rescuers yearn for an individual with lots of issues. A basket case. Now a good basket case can provide the rescuer plenty of opportunities to rescue, while perpetrators need a scapegoat. Now a healthy person will perform in each of these roles occasionally, but the drama triangle becomes dysfunctional and pathological when the role players actively avoid leaving the familiar and comfortable environment of the drama triangle play. So their investment in their role in the, in the triangle and their resistance to doing their life any differently or giving up the game is at the expense of forward action or the resolution of the conflict that is present. And this is all too pervasive in our culture. It is common to see this pattern in stagnant or declining businesses. 
It is present in many social groups, families, and in our political system, to name a few. In each case, the drama triangle is an instrument of destruction. I was raised and domesticated, like many of us, by the popular stories of the day. My Saturday morning cartoons brought to light the heroes and villains, the rescuers, victims, and perpetrators. Even the central story of Christianity, the story of our Savior, who sacrificed his life to redeem humanity. Is it any wonder the drama triangle has reached such vast dysfunctional proportions? Do you see this drama triangle as it relates to political parties, candidates, or social organizations? The drama triangle is alive on both sides of the political aisle, and it is not even questioned, because we are collectively playing this out unaware that these are patterns or roles we slide into. So let me give you a personal example. I had a friend years ago who used to talk about getting married, and when I would inquire as to what for her was the perfect partner, her first and only response was, go for the money. Now, now we, of course, would laugh each time she said it. But for her, the money and the person with the money was her rescuer. Another personal experience of the drama triangle I lived in was in my professional life. I worked with a person in a leadership role who for many years consistently repeated the statement, it's not safe. Now this was frequently stated when challenges arose or people or situations felt uncomfortable and especially when her agenda was not being fulfilled. When she would be asked to explain what wasn't safe, she would move from the victim role to the perpetrator. In other words, she would capture our attention with a statement from the victim perspective. It's not safe. And once she had our attention, she would then, rather than answer the question about what wasn't safe, she would begin to point fingers and place blame on others as the reason she didn't feel safe. It was remarkable to observe her switching roles in the twinkling of an eye. And then the group energy would be to attempt to rescue her. This dynamic always diverted our attention from our business activity at hand. It stalled our progress. It stalled our momentum. It sabotaged and diverted energy and stole our focus from nurturing and growing our purpose and mission. Instead, we unknowingly used most of our time and talent rescuing someone not interested at all in being rescued or accepting any personal responsibility for her own growth and development. So now, there's a way to escape the drama triangle. And this is what I want to talk to you about as well. It's not impossible. Like anything, it can be managed and changed. It simply requires awareness and mindfulness. When we understand the characteristics of what makes up a certain dynamic, that impacts the culture, we are then better equipped to manage it in an effective and productive way. Seeing things for what they are provides the beginning of change. Can you see yourself in any of these three roles in your business life, your business environment, in your family dynamic, or in any organization you may belong to, or a relationship you may be involved in? If you said yes, congratulations. This is the first giant leap to change. All of us need to improve and strengthen our ability to observe ourselves and others when conflict arises and to notice if the drama triangle is alive in the conflict. In other words, to consciously realize we are in the drama triangle and if we find ourselves playing a role in the triangle, to play it consciously. That's right, play it consciously. Finding ourselves in the role and having enough awareness to do it consciously is tremendously powerful, helpful and healthful. It's the way out of the unconscious pattern because we bring consciousness and awareness to it. So once we can be in the pattern consciously, we can then become a presence, an awareness, and an advocate for bringing the relationship or conversation and conflict back, a refocusing, a reminding of our common purpose as opposed to fixing the blame or saving one another or being saved. Without awareness and understanding of the drama triangle, the drama triangle will continue to impact your interactions both personally and professionally. And in the larger context, our culture and society, it will and does stifle potential and possibilities. Every one of us has played these roles at some point in time in our evolution. Maybe you're playing this out right now. Don't despair. Once again, the first step in shifting this pattern, the cornerstone of healthy-mindedness, of successful living, of living a life of wholeness, 
living a life of wholeheartedness is beginning to notice when you're starting to take on one of these roles. The story I shared of my experience with a, a member of our leadership team inspired my deep investigation as to the dynamic that I became part of but did not have a clue or any idea what was happening at the time. In that scenario, we never reached any healthy resolution with the situation because none of us had the awareness or the capacity to deal with it effectively. But it was the inspiration for me to study and bring understanding to this phenomenon. This drama triangle, if it had not been so impactful and puzzling, I would never have developed the capacity to recognize, manage, and help break the cycle with wisdom, clarity, and integrity. Integral living practices was the system that brought brilliant clarity to the roles and to the capacity to shift out of these crippling repetitive patterns for myself. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of seeing the patterns, living in the roles and experiencing how they crippled my organization and its success and crippled myself and my success. So it's time to wake up. It's time to grow up. I recommend we approach this with lighthearted curiosity and play in the pleasure of witnessing ourselves growing and changing consciously. I began this discussion by addressing the idea of culture. And once again, culture is an umbrella term which encompasses the social behavior and norms found in human society. Over time, behaviors, patterns, and habits get adopted into our culture and it's easy to forget that at a certain point in time what may be a cultural norm today was developed, not a fixed part of the culture that it's always been. Once again, good news because it reminds us we create our lives, we create our culture, and if we feel what we have created either personally or collectively is no longer working for us or in the best interest of our culture, we can then make the change. So if you find yourself embroiled in a drama triangle or a similar pattern I've discussed today, take heart. The long view of our history demonstrates humanity's capacity for change and advancement. Better days are ahead. If you have any questions about this dynamic, drama triangle, this interaction pattern, please don't hesitate to contact me.